Blender 2.92 is due to be officially released in about two weeks. As always, I've been the test chimp during the alpha and beta stages, putting up with all the errors and the bugs, so you don't have to. This is a really big update with lots of impressive features, so let's jump in and take a look. So the first thing I want to talk about today is geometry nodes. The Blender Institute has been working on a new initiative called Everything in Nodes, which as the name suggests, will eventually allow us to control almost all of Blender with the node system. So for geometry nodes, if I select this object and I change the shader workspace to geometry, you can see it adds this new geometry node modifier into the stack. There's about 40 nodes so far and they can be used to replicate loads of really common functions such as subdivision surface modifiers and transformations to move objects around and scale them. There's also a lot of new functions too, for instance, you can use this point density node to generate loads of points on a mesh and then we can swap out those points with just about anything we like including other geometry. So to show you how this works, I've made this really simple scene here where there's these little mushroom spores and they grow on the monkey head and the rocks around it. Their position is driven by the position of an empty object in the scene, so you can affect the growth of the spores just by moving the empty around. This scene took less than an hour to put together with geometry nodes and I think it's a really nice effect. Modeling in Blender has seen some really nice improvements too, which should speed up your workflow. If you press the T key in object mode, you'll now see there's a new option here, which allows you to draw geometry directly in the viewport. By default, it draws from the corner of where you drag, but you can hold down the Alt key and draw from the center, or you can press Shift, which allows you to fix the aspect ratio if you want to make, say, a cube instead of a rectangle. And if you press Control, you can go into snapping mode. I found this is a really powerful tool if you want to quickly block out the layout of a scene and then you can replace those objects with more detailed models once you're happy with the basic composition. You can draw directly on top of the surface of another object and there's quite a few different default shapes to pick from like spheres and cylinders. Fluids have seen some nice updates too. I won't cover them all here because there's quite a few but I do want to talk about some of the more important ones. The previous flip fluids algorithm had a few little quirks. It was more suited to larger bodies of water, ripples and waves sometimes wouldn't appear where you'd expect them to, and if you pay attention to the right hand side, you can see that a lot of the water which splashes out just kind of disappears. We now have this new system called APIC, which is much better suited to smaller water simulations. You get the nice waves and ripples where you'd expect them to be, and you see a lot less water just disappearing out of the simulation. There's also a new viscosity setting in the fluid physics which is perfect for more dense fluids like ice cream, honey and oil. I've made this little slime animation to show that you can also keyframe the viscosity of a liquid so you can have it go from being thick to thin at any point. The motion tracking suite has had some much needed updates which make it not only more stable but massively faster when you're tracking multiple points at once. If I start tracking some auto-generated points using the old system, you can see that Blender really struggles. This is only 100 frames, but it takes over 30 seconds to track this shot. Running the same task in Blender 2.92 takes less than 4 seconds, which is actually faster than the playback rate of the footage. What a time to be alive. Eevee's also receiving a really important update in the form of Cryptomats. Cryptomats have existed in cycles for a while now, and it's basically a really powerful, industry standard masking tool that comes in very handy when you're compositing your renders. So before you render, you just need to go over to the Layer Properties tab and select the type of cryptomat that you want, either based on the material or the object. Once your render is complete, you can go over to the Compositing tab and you'll see these new outputs for Cryptomat, which you can connect up to the Cryptomat node. Now if we take a look at the output called Pick, you can see that each object has been given its own unique colour. Using the eyedropper tool, we can just select one of those objects and now we'll have a perfect cutout of the monkey and we'll also have a corresponding matte mask which we can use to do lots of different things. I'm going to use the mask as a factor of alpha over node and I'm going to plug in two different copies of the original image. Now I'm going to use the blur node just to blur everything in the scene except for the monkey. The most powerful thing about the crypto mat is its flexibility. For instance, let's say we want to reverse that shot and we want the monkey to be out of focus. We can just remove the monkey from the crypto mat and we can add the other two objects and then we'll get the opposite effect. 
so those are my favourite updates coming to Blender 2.92. Leave a comment underneath to let me know what features you're most looking forward to. In the meantime, I just created my first ever Patreon exclusive tutorial where I show you how I made this little guy. I call him a psychedelic twerk wookie. You can find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Until next time guys, catch you later.